on July 20th, 1976, the first unmanned spacecraft landed on the planet Mars. And mankind waited, intense expectation, for the answer to the question that had puzzled him for centuries. Is there life on Mars? Those who had never believed the red planet was inhabited who shook their heads knowingly as if to say, we told you so. The believers pointed out that the instruments could only scan as far as the horizon. If the Martians had sent a space probe to Earth, they argued, they could have landed in even less promising terrain. The middle of the Sahara Desert, for example. On the whole, the non-believers won the day. However, if the spacecraft had only landed a few miles further on, things might have been different. It is January 1999, 23 years later, and preparations are almost complete for the first manned expedition to Mars. Missile and internal AC. Affirmative. Pressurization complete. Affirmative. Status check. Range safety arm light on. Affirmative. Range ready. Ready. Minus seven hours to lift off of Expedition One. This mission is for unmanned main parent vehicle launch into parking orbit to await crew mission link up tomorrow. All rocket stage systems checks completed. Friendly command to internal. Power. 
Victory within limits and okay. Main stage burn satisfactory. We can level two reach now. Any comments, Colonel? Easy does it, Bert. Where's Bender? Hold it, Captain! I feel less worried about the launch than about confronting them. You won't have to say too much. Just give them a nice, enigmatic smile. They'll be happy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Any questions, please? Uh, yes. Colonel, you've been working on this project for ten years now. How does it feel on the eve of the first mission? I think you'd better ask that after they've made a successful landing. Yes. All our evidence points to the fact that there is no life on Mars. Do you expect to find it any different? No, but then we won't be sure until we get there. <laughs> Where's York? Uh, Captain York will be along any moment. As you all know, this is just the beginning of a major effort on the part of NATO Alliance to explore the outer planets. Yes? Any last minute changes, Colonel? Yes, we have decided that Major Spender's efforts would be of greater service here during the first trip to Mars. In the meantime, let me introduce Captain Conover, who is in charge of the scientific end of this expedition. Captain? Thank you, Colonel Wilder. Keep smiling. When did you get news in the change, Spender? This morning from Wilder. Well, don't sweat it. It's just internal politics. You'll make the next trip. I'd better, I'll tell you that. The atmosphere on Mars, although thin by our standards, is certainly capable of supporting life. Oh, Captain York. I would like to conclude that the British have always endeavored to broaden the frontiers of human civilization by joining in these efforts. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce Captain York. How are you doing? Don't worry, John, I won't bore the moment for you. How many flights does this make, Captain? Uh, this will make my 24th liftoff. Shows parking over and established satisfactorily within limits. John, hmm? I'd like to have a look at these when you got them out. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, don't forget, Raj Sunday, Ruth and I are expecting you. And a military command, sir? No, just an order from your elder brother. Be there. Yes, sir. Status check. Command on intel. Affirmative. Telemetry in launch condition. Affirmative. Well, I. I wish I were going with you. Well, if I know you, Colonel, you'll be up there in a year's time. Maybe we'll all be up there someday. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. And our prayers go with you. Initiated. We 
We have it. 1,000 feet. Looking good. You confirm you have telemetry online light indicating? Affirmative. We have green telemetry. Roger. We have it back now. We have green. All systems. Burn normal. Some vibration during Mark 1 transition. We copy. Roger. Downrange tracking good. You are go for a standard injection and should have good rendezvous input status. Roger. We have lock on for automatic docking skills. Roger. 40 feet. Green. 20 feet, green. Closing, one foot per second, increasing. Final sequence. Scrub contact, engaging. Locked. Preparing transfer to main craft. house of crystal pillars on the planet Mars by the edge of an empty sea. In the evenings, when the fossil sea is warm and motionless, Mr. K sits in his room listening to his book. York? I'm this. 
sorry. Mm. I heard you cry out. Tell me, what did you encounter? I had a, I had a dream about a man. He is not from our world. I have never encountered with a thought like it before. He came down from the sky and spoke to me. He said, we are from the third planet. My name is Nathaniel York. There are two of us in this ship. Go on. He said, we come from Earth. That is the name of our planet. He used another language, but my mind was able to translate it. Is it possible? There are people on the third planet. Our scientists have made it abundantly clear that there is too much oxygen in the atmosphere to sustain life. There were people. Injection looking good. Do you have vibration? Negative. Smooth burn. We are nominal on all systems here. Confirm. Transfer to descent stage. Affirmative. Counting down for separation. We read you. Undocked. Roger. Separation normal. Moving away. Five feet. We have a clear view of the main craft. Looks in pretty good shape after that trip. We copy. We're right on track, sir. If everything is go, we'll be on the surface at 0400. Everything is a goal from our end, Captain. This will be our last transmission until we pass around the back side and regain direct control. Over. We read you. Have a safe landing. Thank you, sir. been dreaming again. The same dream? Yes. The ship coming down from the sky again. The tall man York stepping out to speak to me. He said... He said I was... beautiful. Only a dream. Was it? Is that all there was to it? No. What else? He told 
told me he would lure me away in his ship, back to his planet. Even kill for me if he had to. It's a sign. A sign? There really is a ship from the third planet. But you said... It will land in Green Valley, won't it? heard every word you spoke in your sleep, even the time. Forgive me. I'm sorry. It was only a dream. Of course. Carefully. Don't worry, if we meet any hostile Martians, I'm ready for them. Don't start any wars up there. Actually, sir, I think there's less chance of that up here than down on Earth. <laughs> Touche. interested in the sky tonight. It's very beautiful. Are you going to town? This is the night you usually go? No. I have other more pressing matters to attend to. I'll be back soon. Where are you going? Pyos, she invited me. She lives in Green Valley, doesn't she? You know where she lives. I'm sorry, Ela, but you can't go. I'm sorry. But you must stay here tonight. I have an important mission to perform. You must stay here and inform Tria in case I don't return. Will you stay? If you want me to. Please, don't use that. Is there not some other way? One is justified in killing when it is essential. When one is protecting. Protecting? One's home. One's land. One's world, perhaps. From what? from whatever endangers it. Furthermore, this weapon is clean. By releasing these bees, I merely speed them on their way. But someone, things can get destroyed in the process. Naturally. And it could be you.
she cannot look at him. She thinks only of the tall stranger from another world. But outside is only the empty desert, and the bright stars coming out on the black sky, and far away the sound of water stirring cold in the long canals. Expedition One, this is Mission Control. Do you read me? Come in, please. Expedition One. Expedition One, come in, please. Expedition One, do you read me? Expedition One, this is Mission Control. Come in, please. Expedition One, come in, please. This is Mission Control. Expedition One, come in, please. Do you read me? Expedition One, this is Mission Control. Come in, please. Considering a recommendation of discontinuance, Joe. Discontinuance? General, we're committed to this project. We may have just lost York and Conover. And maybe not. It could be their equipment. It could be interference from the Martian atmosphere. Do you think such a recommendation would be accepted? I don't know. My guess is we'll be expected to send up an expedition within the year. And you feel comfortable about that? It doesn't matter whether I feel comfortable with it or not. We can't stop now. We're talking about an entire planet that might be colonized. Maybe. The way things are going here on Earth, maybe it ought to be given consideration. That's why I want to lead the second expedition. Out of the question. You know what I mean, John? Your importance as project director rules on any question of you're going to Mars. Oh, Colonel. Yeah. May I talk to you about the next expedition? Sure. I know there was a reason why I wasn't on the first. Don't look for a special reason, Jeff. There wasn't any. I'll do everything I can to get you on it, provided there, there is one. You think there might not be? I fear there might not be. Why fear? Is it so important? <laughs> you know it is. Well, personally, I think we should hold off. However, if the project does go, I want to be a part of it, yes. You know there's always a risk of losing lives in such an operation. Sure, I know that. But that's not what bothers me. What is it, then? John, what if, despite all that we believe, there really is life on Mars? Have we the right to invade their world? Invade? Should I say colonize? What's wrong with colonization? Of course. If there were life on Mars, that would change everything. I doubt very much if there is, though. Not life as we know it. Anyway, let's hope we get a chance to find out. The ship comes down from space without Wilder, without Spender. It has traversed the black velocities encountering ancient moons like a pale leviathan slipping through an otherwise empty sea. It has come down from the stars and the shining movements and the silent gulfs of space. It is a new ship. It has fire in its body and three young men in its metal cells. The second expedition to Mars has arrived. God in heaven. I'll be damned. 
I'll be damned. Hold it. Let's examine this before we move any closer. Now, is it feasible that two planets could evolve the same way? Clapboard houses? Church steeple? Elm trees? Maples? Yachtman Conover? Maybe that explains it. Explains what? This? The last radio transmission from York and Conover came in on the day they reached Mars. Now, if they were still alive, they would have made some effort to contact Earth. And even if they were alive and had decided for... for some unknown reason to build a town like this, how could they do it so soon? Look at those trees. Some of them are a century old. This is something different. This is something completely different. Let me tell you something. I was born in a town called Green Bluff, Illinois. And that town looks so much like Green Bluff, it frightens me. Sir, maybe Mars has evolved in the same way as Earth. Maybe there are identical civilization graphs on every planet in the solar system. This could be the greatest discovery of the age. No, that just couldn't be so. Whatever it is, we can't just stand here and speculate. We've got to analyze it on the spot. Listen. Let's go. Let's try that house. It looks as though an entire town from Earth has been transported to Mars. There's only one way this could have happened. Sir, it has to be that space travel began before the First World War. No. No, that's just not possible. What if there were people in 1905, say, who hated war and got together with some scientists in secret? Such a thing could never stay secret. What other explanation is there? They've just cut the grass. Sir? Nothing, Hingston. I don't believe this. Can I help you? You're speaking English. Are you selling something? What uh, town is this? Green Bluff, Illinois, of course. And the year? 1979. It's over 20 years ago. Are you census takers? Is that why you're in uniform? We are from Earth. And this is Mars. Young man, this is Green Bluff, Illinois. If you'll excuse me now. Wait. I'm sorry, I have things to do. But I don't understand how... Is it possible that we went through a space warp or something and, and landed on Earth as it was 21 years ago? We're not on Earth. The air is too thin. You're right. It's got to be that space travel started long before we think it did. But people built this town to look like the one they'd left. People 
called it Green Bluff, Illinois, where I was born. What if Sam is right, sir? And what if there was space travel a long time ago, and the people that came here became so homesick for Earth it resulted in some sort of mass psychosis? I mean, what if the woman in this house just thinks she's on Earth? That could be it. Hypnosis passed through generations. No, no. What else could it be? This green bluff. I know this town. And I think... I think I know. What is it, sir? I think... What is it, Captain? I know that, man. Arthur! It's you, Arthur. You. Edward. Yes, Edward. Edward. But you died when I was only 19. Mom's at home. Mom? Dad, too. They're alive. No. No, that's not possible. Why fight it, Arthur? Here we are. That's all that's important. We're alive again. No questions asked. Mars is him. <laughs> who knows? As Mom always says, who are we to question? We have a second chance. Right back in that house on Old Oak Gnome Avenue. That I can beat you to the front porch. Oh, yeah? Wait a minute, Captain. You can't go off like that. Grandma. Mistake. Sam? Sam Hankson. Aunt Thelma. I beat you. It's this thin air. It's all right. Shh. You're home now. You're home. Arthur! In the darkness of mission control, the fate of the second expedition is in doubt. 
There's been no transmission from Mars for over 12 hours. in space, and all of this will be gone. Oh, don't think like that, son. Let's just be happy. But I do have to go back to the ship just for a little while. Oh, not tonight, Arthur. Not if you want the surprise that's coming by later. Surprise? Mm-hmm. Gets in from Chicago in, in less than an hour. Meryl. You mean Meryl went back? Well, now, if I answered that, it wouldn't be a surprise. But how can that be? They sent her away just to forget about me. I know. All we're saying is if you go back to your ship tonight, you'll never know what the surprise was. I really think I ought to check up on it. I, I don't think anybody else is there. No one will touch it, my son. <sighs> Do it in the morning, pal. Why not? <laughs> Good. Mm. Oh, Mom. I look so tired. Guess I am. It's been quite a day. It sure has. <laughs> And your bed's still there whenever you're tired. After your surprise. Good night. I just can't believe it, Marilyn. But you have to believe it, Arthur. Because it's true. But how could you arrange it with your folks? By telling them I didn't care about getting my allowance cut off. It's incredible. Or not being able to go to Europe with them next summer. How could you do that? It was easy. Because the one thing I got out of college was finding out what I don't want. Like rooting at a football game with some freshman when I could be here with you. You're not sorry, are you? That I'm here? Sorry? My God, no. It's just that... I'm surprised your father hasn't had me locked up. I mean, I'm just plain old Arthur Black from the wrong side of town. You're my Arthur Black. And I'm going to see to it we both stand up to him. All I ever needed was a little encouragement. You're getting it now, Arthur. So good. 
Get your pajamas on. fantastic. Boy, am I tired. Marilyn Becker. Night, Arthur. Night, Edward. Edward. I was just thinking. Things is bad for you. What if... What if we actually have landed on Mars, okay? So this small Illinois town is not really an Illinois. And? And these people are not my friends. Not my family. They're Martians. Disguised to look like Earth people. And my mother is not... Is not our mother? Then what about me? Then you're not my brother, Edward. No, Arthur, I'm not. Suppose there were Martians. And they saw a rocket ship landing and had no defense against its weapons. Suppose they used the only real defense they had. Telepathy. Suppose they picked up the childhood memory of a town from the captain of the ship. Suppose the town was deliberately populated with the most loved people from the memories of all the ship's crew. People like Marilyn Becker. All the men seeing mothers, aunts, uncles, fathers, sweethearts, dead. 10, 20, 30 years ago, abandoning their ship? Would there be any other way to divide and overcome invaders? You couldn't disguise the air. No, we couldn't disguise the air. I can't move. The chocolate pudding was drugged. Except, of course, you only thought that it was chocolate pudding. Your death will be painless, Captain. Why? A proper question, Captain. We are not a violent people. The members of your first expedition were destroyed by a husband who convinced himself that jealousy of his wife was actually concerned for his planet's welfare. This is different. We are joining forces to destroy three lives. Why? Because we fear for our existence. We have seen your weapons. More, we have looked into your minds and seen the violence there. We have witnessed in your minds what your kind have done to Earth. How your society trembles on the verge of self-destruction, seeking to find a solution to its own troubles on other worlds, rather than solve them on its own. We cannot permit that on our world. Forgive us, Captain Black. 
Once we were an honorable people. Now see the depth to which we have inexorably fallen. To murder out of fear. Forgive us. The Martians, still under the influence of the thoughts and memories they have taken from the minds of the Earthmen, dig three neat holes and perform an alien ceremony from a strange and distant world. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Slowly, very slowly, the thoughts and memories fade away like a long dying echo. And the Martians go back to their own city of crystal windows and fragile towers, shedding their human forms as nightmares fade into a new dawn. Margarita Bell. Thanks, John. Cheers. Cheers. Listen, John. Hmm? I don't suppose you'd reconsider heading up this mission? I reconsider every time you ask. There's no alternative. Unless you want to take my place. Not this time. It's too damn dangerous. That's yeah. enough, you two. Okay. Let's not discuss business tonight, okay? Did you drink? Hey, look who's here. Oh, it's Sam Jeff. I can't seem to shake you two. <laughs> you better get used to it, Colonel. Well, how are you, lovely lady? I'm not the only one who knows about this place, I see. No. Join us for dinner? No, no, wouldn't think of it. Elmer's mm. cooking. Cook. How about you, Jeff? I'd love to. Ladies don't mind, that is. No, not a bit. We won't be seeing you for quite a while, I guess. Colonel. Mm. Well, then it's settled. Can I get you a drink, Sam? That's what I came here for. Oh. I want you to know I went over to final checklist today. And everything's in order and all set to go. You Tested the gyroscope. Sure did. Double checked it. Loads tomorrow. Good. How about a drink? Yeah, I have a tomato juice. Tomato juice? Come on, it's your last night. <laughs> tomato juice is fine. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. It really doesn't bother you with the thought of flying all the way to Mars. No, no, not at all. No. Excuse me. One of these days, you'll all be making a trip. Sam? Mm. Not Phil. You'd never leave without me. Would you? I might. That's right, Sam. I'm strictly a mission control pilot. Never had my brother's instinct for defying gravity. <laughs> well, he won't have to leave without you. Once we find our way there, it'll be a family scene. Oh, you don't think I'd be any good for more than a few weeks without my Elmer now, do you? Huh? 
No. No. <laughs> no. Do you really feel that way, Jeff? Yes, I do. Do you think it's right that we should move in on any planet, whether or not it's populated? Well, we wouldn't be moving in as conquerors. Wouldn't we? Haven't we always? I'm not qualified to answer that. But I do know that John doesn't think of himself as anyone's conqueror. Only yours, honey. And no one else's. I should hope not. I think I'll join that argument over there. Thanks for the drink. How are you doing? Okay. Considering. These hors d'oeuvres are delicious. I'm gonna have to hire that chef from a restaurant. You have a restaurant? Oh, no, not yet. No, but I plan to open one just as soon as I finish up my tour of duty. Hmm. hmm. Nothing spectacular, you understand? No, just ordinary food, you know, French fries, hamburgers, hot dogs. I didn't know you were into gourmet food, Sam. Gourmet food, yeah. <laughs> I think our table's ready. Hey, now, look, hold it, hold it. Before we start, I'd just like to make a little speech. I want to wish you three guys the safest of journeys. May God watch over you and protect you on your mission. I'll drink to that. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Aren't you coming to bed? In a while. I'm going to ask you not to go. I know you have to. I know you do. But two expeditions have failed, John. Why another? Why? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I shouldn't have asked that. I know it doesn't. Oh. We're not going to fail this time. I promise you. This time, hey, this time we're going to make it. There was an eerie stillness when they first set up camp in the dry cold of a Martian night. Now they stand around the fire waiting and wondering. I wonder how long the city's been deserted. We don't know it is deserted. Well, just look at it. Check it out. Not yet. I wonder what happened to the other two expeditions. It looks peaceful enough down here. We don't know that either. Wait a minute. What's with all the gloomy talk here? We made it. We're safe. We should be celebrating. 
How about if I uh, break out uh, the liquor rations now, sir? No, let's wait till Spender gets back. We know it's safe. Oh, it looks safe enough to me. I wonder if it's possible there's still living Martians there. Mr. Mears, other civilization died a long time ago. But who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who the hell knows? What happened to the other, the other expedition? Hey, Cookie, come on, where's that coffee, huh? Right, okay. Coffee, let's go. Okay, cookie, cookie, cookie. Mm. You know, if Mars is, is ever colonized, man can make himself a fortune here. Fortune! What? Build himself a restaurant? Why the hell not? <laughs> People gotta eat. Well, I'm not building anything. <laughs> if that don't work, and I get home in one piece, maybe they'll throw a big P-raid for me. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll do something in their TV commercials. Huh? <laughs> Hell, I can be sincere as an next fella. <laughs> I cashed in on this here. Yeah, thing, Sam, you know? you're all hard. You betcha. Hey, that's Spender. It's Spender. Well, that city there has been dead for about a thousand years. Same applies to three other cities in the hills. But a fifth one, about 70 miles from here. Yes. There were Martians living in it last week. What do you mean, last week? Where are they now? Well, they're dead. Dead? I went into a house there, thinking the city had been empty for a thousand years or more. Inside, there were bodies, like piles of autumn leaves, like dry sticks or stacks of burnt newspaper. I would say dead 10 days at the outside. So then I went into towns and cities within a 100-mile radius, and four out of five had been empty for a 1,000 years or more. But the fifth one always contained the same things, bodies. Can you tell what they died of? Well, you won't believe this, but as near as I could figure, they probably died of chicken pox. Chicken pox? Only it did things to the Martians it never did to people on Earth. We may not know what happened to those first two expeditions, but we know now what they unintentionally did to the Martians. And you saw no sign of life? No, sir, I didn't. I suppose it's possible that some escaped to the hills. But I doubt it, though. And if that were true, there wouldn't be enough of them left to make any difference. I would say, as far as the Martians are concerned, this planet is finished. You know, a race creates itself for a million years, refines itself, does everything it can to give itself respect and beauty, and then it dies, part in its own time with dignity, as it should be. But the other part, does it perish of some majestic affliction? No, it doesn't. It dies of a disease that does not kill the youngest child on Earth. It's like saying the Greeks died of mumps. Well, the Roman Empire was decimated by athlete's foot. <laughs> All right. Why don't you get yourself some food, Jeff? Some food? Yeah. That's right, Spen. Food, drink. Come on. Relax a little. Get out of here, Brig. those drinks now, sir. Maybe you'd better. Hey, cookie, 
Come on, give me. Let me tell you about New York City. Last time I was in New York City, I had this terrific blonde. Nope, a redhead. The blonde was New Jersey. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's exactly what I've always said about you, Greg. You don't know your armpit and that hole in your face. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Ginny, Ginny, Ginny. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Hold it, fellas. You ready for this? All right. <laughs> I love it. It's, it works. Hey, come on. We need a little more of that. Got a garbage detail going out here. Hey, where are you going, Briggs? Come on, boys. A garbage detail going out here. Come on, get them together. Come on, you're coming or what? Let's go. I christened the Briggs Canal. Briggs Canal. Briggs Canal. Hey, boys. Briggs Canal. Briggs Canal. Briggs, you're polluting the river. Jeff. Briggs Canal. Brett. Hey, Spender, come here. Suppose you explain yourself. I don't know. I don't know. I was uh, ashamed. Ashamed? Of Briggs, of all of them. It's been a long trip, yes. A long trip, and it might well have been fatal. Do you begrudge them some release from that? After what I said about the Martians? A civilization dying? They didn't see what you saw, Jeff. You can't expect them to feel the same way you feel. Where's their respect, sir? The sense of what is right. I don't follow you. Something horrible has happened here. And we are responsible. We are. We sent up those expeditions. Oh, Jeff. Well, didn't we? Well, of course we did. But what happened was, it was unforeseen. Do you really think we would have sent up those expeditions if we'd known? Yes, I oh, do. Oh, Absolutely. And they know it. Doesn't it bother you? The idea of them watching us make fools of ourselves? Who? The Martians. You said they were dead, Jeff. But doesn't an old thing know when a new thing arrives? What are you talking about? Ghosts? I just believe in things that were done. And there were so many things done here. Streets and houses and books and big canals and clocks and places with names. Things that were used and touched for centuries. And I don't see how we can ever use them without feeling uncomfortable. Oh, well, we can change the names, but the old names will still be there. So no matter how we touch Mars, 
we won't be able to really touch it. So that'll make us angry. We'll get mad at that and just rip it up. We'll change it to suit ourselves. And ruin it. Like we've ruined Earth. We're not going to ruin it. No? No. Us Earthmen have a talent for ruining things. If there are any Martians alive in those hills, they're going to grow to hate us. No, you're wrong. There's no hatred here. Looking at that city, they were a graceful, philosophical people. They wouldn't mind our being here any more than they would mind children playing on their lawns, knowing and understanding children for what they are. Looking at all this, we'll know we're not so marvelous. And we are children. We'll learn. Will we? Oh, yes. I won't report what happened just now. Don't let it happen again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's take a look at that city. This is beautiful. It's just beautiful. Uh. <sighs> Briggs is obviously moved. <laughs> Hello, anybody home? Briggs. Uh, sir. Shut up. Yes, sir. Who were they, I wonder? How did they live? And who were their kings? I think I'm gonna be sick. Jeff? I'll be back. Where are you going? I'll be back. Don't be gone long. We're heading back to the ship. Jeff? Jeff! Any sign of him? No. He's there. He must be hiding. Although why he'd want to hide, I have no idea. Well, I don't think he's going to be coming back, sir. How do you mean? Well, I, I don't know exactly why. It's just a feeling I got. Yeah, the way he acted tonight, the way he looked in that city. Oh. Uh, different. The way he never looked before. Well, where the hell have you been for the last week, huh? 
I'm the last marshal. You're the... <laughs> Spender, where you been? I found a Martian. Where? I've been living in a Martian city, in the hills, learning to read their books, understand their art forms. What are you talking about? And one day a Martian appeared and said, give me your boots. And I did. And then he said, give me your uniform. And I did. I offered him my weapon. But he said he had his own. Are you crazy? And then he said to follow him and see what happened. And he walked across the desert. And he's here right now. I don't see any Martians. <laughs> don't you? Sam. What the hell could have done this? It wasn't done by any of our weapons. It had to be done by a Martian weapon. Spender? Or a Martian? Three of them dead. I had to be Spender, Colonel. Couldn't be anybody else. Hey, probably went off his rocker. He always was in his own little world. Right, let's let's arm ourselves. Go get him. Yeah, yeah, right now. that? Must be the same weapon he used to kill Briggs, the others. Okay, what do we do now? Colonel. 
I could have killed you just now. I didn't. I just want to talk to you. I'll put my weapon down. You carry yours. If I go for my weapon, then kill me. Don't you believe it, Colonel? It's a trick. A truth, Colonel. Let's talk. Let's go. No. No. Just Colonel Wilder. Don't do it. Why, Jeff? Because I have found that what the Martians had was just as good as anything man could ever hope to achieve. And I'm also concerned as to what we might bring to this planet to contaminate it on every level until we blow it up, just the way we're bound to blow ourselves up on Earth. How will killing us stop that? It will delay the next expedition. If you return, there'll be a wholesale invasion of Mars, won't there? If we don't return, they'll still come. Yes, probably. But with luck, I'll live to be 60 or 70 years old. And every expedition that comes to Mars will be met by me befriended by me, destroyed by me. And Mars will remain untouched for the next half century at least. And maybe they'll give up by then. Maybe the war will start and space travel will be finished. You've got it all planned. Yes, I have, John. It's not going to work that way. Within an hour, you'll be dead. I found some underground passages and a place to live you'll never find. I can hide there until you're off guard and just pick you off. I can't believe it's you saying these things, Jeff. I can't believe it's you doing these things. Murdering innocent men. Let me show you how they lived. For half an hour. It's all I ask, John. Then you can come after me. Kill. Colonel. I'll be back in 30 minutes. Where are you going? With Spender. Don't you trust him.
here. The answer's all here, Colonel. I don't know what you're talking about. The secret to Martian life is that they discovered the secret of cooperating with nature, knowing that the reason for living is simply life itself, no more than that. The enjoyment of pure being. And yet they killed. With two expeditions vanishing, do you really think the Martians had nothing to do with it? If they did, it was only to defend their way of life. The way you're defending it? Yes. Yes. Because it's a way of life worth defending, Colonel. A way of life that blends religion with art and science while realizing, in essence, that science is only an attempt to investigate the miracle of life and art an attempt to explain it. I'm sure their way of life was wonderful. That doesn't... Then stay here. Huh? Stay here, John. And listen to music like you've never heard in your entire life. There's a patio near here with a tape reel of Martian music on it that is at least 50,000 years old. There are Martian books that date back dozens of centuries. An entire history of their planet, their life, their culture, their art, their philosophy. Why go back to the others? You're not at all like them. Stay here and come to appreciate the perfect simplicity of Martian life. Stay, John. It's a shame there's no Martians left. There are a few. Where? Where are the Martians? You may never know. But perhaps I'll show them to you if you, uh, if you stay. You know I can't do that. Well... I suppose you'd better start back then, huh? But do me a favor. What a favor? Yes. If you win, will you do whatever you can to keep them from tearing this planet apart? Well, I'll do everything I can, of course, but... I'm afraid that'll be damn little. And if it'll help you to accept this any easier, just think of me as a man who went berserk one summer day and was never right again. Turn around. Turn around, Colonel. Now walk. Jeff, I... Jeff? Jeff? He won't come down. Make it a clean shot. Get it over with. With pleasure. Through the heart. After what he did? You heard what I said. be dressed like that. Must be some kind of a trick, Colonel. I don't think so. Split.
Perhaps this is the way it's going to be. It was only then that Colonel Wilder fully realized what was going to happen. Men would come to the new frontier. They would come because they were afraid or unafraid, because they were happy or unhappy. They would come with small dreams or large dreams or no dreams at all. But they would come. And then what would happen to Mars? You're looking at a picture being transmitted some 60 million miles from a satellite camera above the planet Mars. A picture of the first spaceships to be dispatched to the Red Planet since Colonel John Wilder and his crew left for Mars almost three years ago. I'm standing in the heart of the Zeus Mission Control Center with General Malcolm Halstead, commanding officer. This is a big day for Project Mars, General. Yes, it is. We've waited a long time for it, but the colonizing fleet is off at last. Is there any expectation of encountering life on Mars? No, we don't anticipate that. To our knowledge, the plague destroyed all life. And that was a dreadful irony, of course. The germs which actually started the plague being carried there by our first expeditions. That's still a matter of speculation, of course. But uh, in any event, it was dreadful. If you'll excuse me. Well, thank you, General. Now we see again the fleet of spaceships approaching Mars. Now the rockets come like beating drums, like silver locusts swarming through the emptiness of space. And from the rockets come men to beat the strange world into a shape that is familiar to the eye. They come to find something, or leave something, or get something. To dig up something, or bury something, or leave something alone. To bludgeon away the strangeness. And Colonel Wilder becomes chief coordinator of the planet Mars, hoping that perhaps he can save some remnant of the old Martian civilization from the advancing thunder of human feet. But it all happens so quickly. So like the technocrats of Earth who have been transplanted to this strange alien environment, they build their homes to blot out the stars using the all-purpose modules designed by computers for this or any other purpose. They plant poles to carry power, dig trenches to bury water pipes, scrape away the land for roads, and then pave over the Martian landscape. In six months, a dozen communities were laid down on the naked planet. They come to Mars to put their names upon the land. The place where the Martians killed the first Earthman is called York Plain. And where the second expedition was destroyed is called Blackville. Then there is Wilder Mountain, Spender Hill, Briggs Canal, and Lustig Creek. Some come to find the unattainable, and for each man it is different. Leif Lustig is searching for the unattainable. <laughs> First rain this season! <laughs> oh, almost like back home. Are you homesick? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get inside. It's cold! It's <laughs> <laughs> good to have a fire. <sighs> Only one thing missing. Oh, please leave. Please. All right. I won't start up again. I'm sorry. At least we're here where he died. I won't speak of it anymore. Hmm? No, no, it's my favorite. 
No, you're cheating. It's my turn. No. Keep your hands up. I <laughs> know I get you. You wait. Now you have this one here. Did you hear something? Not much. Someone whistling. To warm yourself, I leave the door unlatched. Just come in and Don't forget to lock the door.
I'm sorry. I get the tower. No, no. It's a terrible night. Shh. It's all right. Not just the evening. What if it is him? You know it can't be. Morning, Father. It's a nice day. David? You're alive? Why shouldn't I be? All of you, the ship, we came to Mars to try and find you, we never did. I don't understand. You want me to be here, don't you? Of course, but... Then why ask questions? Just accept me. But your mother, the shark. Don't worry. I sang to both of you last night. It'll help you to accept me more. Especially her. I know what shock is, Father. My God, I slept so long. Good morning, David. Good morning, Liz. Oh, you set the table. How sweet of you. See? I put the kettle on, and you help me make breakfast, okay? Okay.
<laughs> Here, my darling. Oh, I get you some more hot coffee. All right? You can't be David. But was someone who? Oh. No. You can tell me. Huh? Here, my darling. You finished? Yes, Mama. Okay. Thank you. Listen to me. Please. There's something about you. You are David, and yet you are not. Why can't you accept me? Tell me who you are. David. David. Where's David? Has he gone outside? Yes. Good. Anna, do you remember anything about the second expedition? About them never returning? Yes, of course. But what has it got to do with David? Among the many who came to Mars were a handful of missionaries to prepare those on the new planet for the reception of God's truth. For Father Peregrine, it was a quest for God himself. We have come to a new land. So we shall need new eyes. We shall hear new sounds. Sins needs have new ears. And there will be new sins, for which we ask the gift of better and firmer and purer hearts. Amen. Welcome to Mars. Father Peregrine? Yes. Father Stone. Hello. John Wilder. Here, let me take you back. Oh. How did you like space travel? That was remarkable. <laughs> oh, absolutely remarkable. <laughs> what? Mmm. Delicious meal, Mrs. Brown. Excellent. Very much. Excellent. Oh. Right, kids, time for bed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Good night to our guest. Good night, Good night. Good night. Well, Good night, Robert. Good night. Can I ask you something, Mr. Wilder? Certainly. There was a rumor on the ship. One of the, the crewmen spoke of it that some prospector broke both his legs up in the Martian hills and would have died there, except that something like spheres of light came at him. And when he woke up, he was lying by the side of the road and was rescued. Spheres of light? You mean a, a, a form of light? Yes, that was the rumor. Now, Father, that has not been substantiated. Uh, coffee? Yes. <laughs> there is no scientific evidence of any life here. All destroyed. A child's disease is obliterating an entire civilization. Yes. Then you think, as I think, that there's absolutely no truth to this rumor? I do. Shame it would have been so good to, to exchange ideas with Martians. Yes, it would have been. 
But I'm afraid all that remains of life on Mars are the cities they left behind. Do you think it would be possible for us to see them? Yes, tomorrow morning. Thank you. I'm very glad to have you here. There's a great need of you on Mars. Mars is like a frontier, like in the Old West or up in Alaska. There are hundreds of miners, laborers, mechanics in our first 12 communities. And they're in great need of spiritual guidance. Oh, yes. Is it possible that the colonization process has been too abrupt, too headlong? I wish it could be slowed down. Too many mistakes are being made. People taking advantage of what's going on, bringing things from Earth I'd hoped they'd left behind. Graft, corruption, bureaucracy. It's a pity. You were thinking of that man you spoke of, aren't you? What was his name? Yes, Spender. Spender, yes. You feel responsible to do what he asked, to prevent men from what did he say? Tearing apart the planet. I do feel responsible, Father. I, uh... I'm going to tell you something I've never told anyone before. Except my wife. When I was with Spender, and he was telling me about his plan to kill everyone who came here in order to save this planet, I remember telling him I couldn't believe it was he saying those things. And I recall the strange look on his face when I asked him if there were any Martians left. A few, he said. I've been wondering about it ever since. And that room he spoke of last night made me wonder again. Well, wondering what? Well, if it were really Spender I was talking to, or if it were someone or something, that had taken him over. You think it's still possible there are Martians? I'd like to think so, Father. These are the oldest remnants of Martian culture we've discovered to date. Our archaeologists estimate they date back over 250 million years. They look like some ancient ruins I've seen on Earth. It makes you wonder if there might not have been a common ancestor between Mars and Earth. What's going on? They're dismantling this structure. For shipment, back to Earth. Perhaps your friend Spender was right. Didn't he predict all this would happen? Yes. Surely there's nothing wrong in sending back to Earth examples of this remarkable civilization? It goes a bit deeper than that. This is exactly what Spender was trying to prevent. Tearing up the planet. These ruins belong to another race. What race? Where are they? I don't know. Nobody knows, Father. I looked after the Spender incident. I scoured this planet for signs of life. Nothing. Yet the feeling that they're here watching persists. I, I can't explain it. I it's time we went back to first town. How about some lunch? Good idea. Um, if you don't mind, Mr. Wilder, we'd, um, we'd rather like to walk back on our own. A walk? Yes, yes. We'd like to see a little bit more of the landscape. Positive? Oh, yes. Which way is first town? Yeah, but... Uh, we'll find it. Uh, by ourselves? Uh, you we'll... want to stay close to the road. I'll send a vehicle back in a few hours. Oh, no, no, no. We'll be fine. Uh, uh, hopefully. Well, I'll send a vehicle back anyway. Uh, just in case you change your mind. Why didn't we go with him? Oh, not yet. Oh, 
We should never have left that road, Father. Never have left that road. We'll be all right. All right. We are lost. Keep the faith, Father. I shall keep the faith. It does have its limits. Oh, not at all. I'm sure that first town's just over those hills. Oh, Father Peregrine, you've been saying that all afternoon. Now the sun is going down, and soon. What will we do then? Pray. Who knows, we'll even be heard on this Atlantish planet. We'll be all right. God is everywhere. Well, I certainly hope so, Father Peregrine, because this is nowhere. We are lost. We are quite hopelessly lost. Do you think perhaps if we, if we shouted hello, they might reply? Who? <sighs> you still haven't given up that rumor, have you? You still hope it might be true. Well... That is what we are doing out here. Oh, Father Peregrine, don't you know how much work there is to be done on Mars? There are at least a dozen communities of sinners in need of redemption, and here we are roaming all over the Martian countryside because of some ridiculous rumor. Well, Father Peregrine. Oh. Monsters. Oh. No, wait. I knew we shouldn't have come here. No, no, don't be afraid. I tell you, this is the work of the devil. No, no, it's not. Please, Father, let us go. I must speak to them. Oh, no, Father. Please. No. Done. Blue lights lifted us. 
No, they couldn't. Yes. Yes, they did. They saved us. They saved our lives. No, Father. We ran. Do you know that's not true? They saved our lives. It proves that they have souls. Father, they're not human. Perhaps not. But I feel something about them. I know a great revolution is at hand. They saved our lives. They think they had a choice. Let us die or rescue us. That proves they have free will. Got to stay here. But, 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 stay stay yes, here. Spend the night. Perhaps I'll come back. But, Father, you are risking the entire missionary expedition just to, to, to just throw these in... Inhuman. Can't you recognize the human in the inhuman? I would rather recognize the inhuman in the human. <sighs> Help me get a fire started. The air is chilling. Oh, Father. I... I'm hungry. We can get food in the morning. In the morning? Really, Father, we should be back in first town instead of sitting around here waiting for some oh, ludicrous. Now, what? What if I prove that these creatures know sin, that they know a moral life, have free will and intellect? <laughs> Well, no, that really would take some proving. <laughs> but they may well have killed the members of the first two expeditions. Isn't that sin? There must have been an original sin on Mars. A Martian Adam and Eve, if you like. Father, are you thinking of the church or merely trying to quench your own thirst of curiosity? Uh, are you thinking of our work, or personally converting Martians? That would be a sin of pride. I know it. But, but many prideful things are done out of love for our Lord. One is not supposed to. Father, at one time, my motivation in joining the church was to meet Christ in person. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I, I refuse to believe you. <laughs> yes. Actually in person. In person. I don't care what your problems are. My problem is I need those two reactors desperately. And don't give me a hard time about customs and permits. You sound like you're back on Earth. Hold it. Yes? You'll call the General House that's ready, sir. Thank you. Do what you can, will you? I'll get back to you tomorrow. General? John, how are you? Well, <laughs> a bit frazzled as we speak. I'm sending out a search party for two wandering missionaries. But that's not why I called. Let me guess. You want to batch of me again about emigration. Exactly. Um, General, you must get them to exercise a little more discretion. The great majority of relocators are first rate, but a few more troublemakers have slipped through. Well, I'll see what I can do, John, but you know the situation here on Earth. Applications to relocate are coming in so fast, we can't process them. In fact, if things get any worse, I may put in for a transfer myself. Well, be sure and let me know. Ruth and I would love to have you as neighbors. Goodbye, Jim. George. Yeah? A 
I'd like an update on that search party. There's still no word on those two missionaries, sir. Thank you. Listen to me, please. My missionaries and I will build a church in these hills. Instead of a cross, a blue sphere will represent the Martian Christ. We will live with you and we will help you to discover God. cities long ago and went to the hills. Once we had bodies such as yours, 
Then we learned to free ourselves, and so took on the look of Blue Blues. We have lived in the winds and skies since then, apart from those we left behind. How we came to be has been forgotten, but we shall never die. We have put away the weaknesses of the body and live in the grace of that being whom you call God. We covered no one's property. We do not steal, nor kill, nor lust, nor hate. We have left sin behind. We thank you for the thought of building us a church, but we have no need of it, for each of us is a temple unto himself. Build your church among your own kind and cleanse them. We are at peace. Come on, Father Stone. Mm. Come on, can't sleep all day. Oh, please. Got a long journey ahead of us. Uh, so we can go further into the hill. Oh, no. No, I know the way back now. I'm going to stay here. Oh, until we're found. Oh, from here we can see for miles. From here we can signal. Wait a minute. Oh! Wait a minute. What, what, what do you mean? You know the way back now. <gasps> what is it? I saw them again. They were... They were hovering above us as we slept. And I felt certain... that they were intelligent, they were aware, they were... they were understanding. So... I stepped off the cliff. You want. I stepped off the cliff. I knew that they were. They would know that it was wrong for me to do so. And that they would stop me. And they did, Father Stone, they did. They knew that it was wrong. And they saved me. <sighs> Come on, Father Stone. We've got to get back to the town. Mr. Wilder will be worried about us. Father! Wait, Father! Wait a minute! Wait! But, Father... No, please, Father, wait! Father! Uh, there is something I don't understand. If, as you say, these globes softened your fall, uh, why did they just leave you there? Well, I suppose I could have asked them to take me back, but somehow I didn't have the heart. Not after what I heard. Uh, heard? Yes, a voice. It spoke to me. And I had said that I would build a church in the hills, a blue globe in place of the cross. Father, what are you saying? I'll tell you later. A voice. Yes, a voice. His voice, Father Stone. His voice. Uh. 
And so Father Peregrine leaves the place where he had seen and heard the old ones of Mars, thinking that there is truth on every planet, all parts of a larger truth. And men will go on to other worlds as well, adding together the parts of the overall truth until the glorious total stands before them like the light of a new day. And all their journeys will have ended then. They will be at home. I'm worried about David. Where do you think he went? He can't have gone to town. The boat is here. Don't worry, he'll be back. If he isn't home soon, you better look for him. All right. Are you going to ask me who I am? Good. Where have you been? Near First Town. I almost got caught. Caught? I don't want to talk about it. We won't then. Wash up time. It's supper time. All right. Mama? David! 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 Where, are you? Where have you been? I went for a long walk. You went for a long walk, and I worry for you. I'm sorry. All right, you're sorry. Leif! Leif! Supper is on. Come. All right. Come. No, have some more. What did you do this afternoon? Hmm? Nothing. Why? No reason, just curious. Do you know what we do this evening? We all go into town. We haven't been there in months. Hmm? I'll just stay home if you don't mind, Mama. Why? Hmm? I just don't feel like going. Of course you do. We all can need a night out, hmm? I'd rather not. I'm afraid of the town. <laughs> you are afraid of the town, but David. People. I'd just rather not. Nonsense. I've never heard such nonsense. Of course we all go, don't we? Mama, if the boy doesn't want to go. Please, then... let it be a family evening, just for once. It has been such a long time. If he doesn't want, let's go another time. No. I've made up my mind we go this evening. Father, I don't want to get caught. Nobody's going to catch you. They feel you're a pretty girl, they're going to be very jealous. <laughs> Stay by me, please. I will, I will. We won't stay the long. I hope not. Leif! Come. Come.
David. What? Come over here, there's so much to see. Come! All right, we are coming. Where's David? Where's that boy? to a cafe and look for him. I don't understand him anymore. If I have trouble finding him, I'll see you by the boat in an hour or so. Yes. Are you all right? I'm living up the canal with my wife and son. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Lustig. How are you? My son is missing. How young is he? 24. 20. Well, he's missing, Mr. Weiner. How long has he been missing? Since we came into town tonight. Well, he could be anywhere. It isn't like that. There's something wrong. Um, what is his name? David. David. David Lustig? Are you, by any chance, related to the David Lustig of the second expedition? Uh, yes, you and your wife came up here in search. Yeah, well, that must have been another David Lustig. Yes. <laughs> You're probably right, Mr. Wilder. Uh, he's full grown. He's probably just wandering around somewhere. I'll go check again. I'm sorry to have bothered you. Mr. Lustig, no. perhaps I... It was foolish of me to come here. You're right, of course. He's 24. He'd just be wandering about. Lustig was 24. Mr. Lustig! Someone there?
Let me go. Let you go. But no one keeps you here. Yes. You do. What? The further your gaze, the more you look, the more I become this. What? I am not what I seem. I am not that vision. I didn't mean to come here. I was in the town square. One thing. I lost hold, and suddenly I was many things to many people. I ran, and they followed. I fled in here. Then you came in, and I was trapped. Oh, yes, trapped. You're not what you see. Forgive me. I wish that I might be, but I cannot. I'm going mad. Oh, no! Or I go down in madness with you. Release me! I can't. Oh, dear Lord, not when you finally come. Two thousand years we waited for your return. And now I'm the one that sees you, that hears you speak. You see nothing but your own dream, your own needs. Beneath all this, I am another thing. But what am I to do? Look away from me. And in that moment, I'll be gone. Go. Go. How will you kill me? Or I'll kill you. If you force me into this guise much longer, I will die. It is more than I can hold. to the church. You looked at the crucifix. Your old dream of meeting him seized you once again. And seized me. My body still bleeds from the wounds you gave me with your secret mind. Oh, Lord. Oh, my sweet Lord. Oh, before I keep you here forever. Father Peregrine. Excuse me, Father. I, 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 I was just in my way to see you. What is it? Do you remember telling me about your crewman who believed in Martians? What was his name? Yes, Spendy. You said you wondered if you were really talking to him or to something that had taken him over? Yes. Well, it may not have been him at all. Mentally or physically. What are you saying? I'm saying he may have been a Martian. 
There's one in First Town right now. What? One who can make people think that he looks like anyone they have in mind. How do you know? Because I saw him. That is, uh, believe me, John, he is here. Hello there, Lusty. Oh. Mark Atterbury. Good evening, Mike. Care to come and sit a while? No, I'm, I'm looking for something. Your last something, have you? Yes, I... Yes, Speaking sir. of last things, mm. you remember Joe Spalding's girl, Lavinia? Yes. Everyone thought she was drowned in the canal. They found what they thought was her body, and it was all beat up, and Joe, he started telling everyone it wasn't her, and she was still alive. What? Guess he was right. Lavinia showed up tonight. Showed up where? Oak Street, by the church. Spaldings were walking home from downtown, and all of a sudden, there was Lavinia running towards him. She didn't recognize him at first. They had a call to her. Then she remembered. Does she know? Home, I guess. Isn't that incredible? Father! David! Please go. There's nothing you can do. You've got to come home. Your mother's waiting. We should never have come into town. My wife will die if you don't come back. She couldn't bear to lose you for a second time. I'm sorry. But the thoughts in this house are strong. I can't change back. There are a family of five that can stand your loss better. I'm tired, weak. You have got to come back. I won't let Anna be hurt again. You belong to us. Please, don't do this to me. Come down. You'll be safer living outside of town. You know that. There'll only be us. We'll never come into town again. Who's down there? Vinny? Come back inside! Don't stop! Don't stop! Please! Hurry! Stop! No! Hurry, David! Lavinia, come back! Lustig! I got a gun! Go down that alley and run to the boat. I lead him off. What you think he is? That me out! You don't understand! You can't shoot him! Daxter! Hello! Get in the boat. David's coming. Where is he? He'll be here right away. There he is! This man's my prisoner. The man's wanted for murder. No, this is my husband. David! David! No, no, that's by Lavinia. No, it's David! He's my prisoner. No, it's David! David! Stop it! Stop it! He's a Martian! You don't understand!
John? Have you heard the news from Earth? There's going to be a war. Wilder's mind is a confusion of troubled thoughts. Thoughts about the dead Martian who might have taught them something of the planet they're living on. Thoughts of the planet they have left behind. The world about to face its final war. Negotiations have completely broken down. The president has declared all lines of communication mutually severed, which leaves the world an armed and waiting camp, with all military forces on full alert. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. John, talk to me. What are we going to do? I know what I have to do. I'm going back to Earth and get my brother and his family up here where it's safe. But you can't. George. Yes, sir? Get me my brother at Mission Control. Why can't they come up here on the next shuttle? Because there won't be another shuttle. They may never know what hit them. All right. Then we'll go home together as a family. No, Ruth. Don't you understand? This may be the only home our family will ever know again. If what you say is true, then we'll be cut off, isolated, forgotten. There may be no one left on Earth to forget us. That's why I have to reach Bill. That's why I've got to say... Bill. Wilder here. Bill, it's John. What in the hell is going on down there? John. It's all over. Everything's falling apart. I'm coming down to get you and the family. But John, you can't. Congress has just cut the entire budget for space exploration. All our resources are going to defense. The president's going to close down the colony. Helstead's probably trying to get through to you right now. I'm bringing you up here if I have to drag you up here. We know enough about Mars for a small group to support life here. So hang in there. Wilder makes a final effort to warn remote colonists of the coming evacuation. But Sam Parkhill's dream of making his fortune on Mars has become an obsession. Somebody. Come on. All right. Hurry up. Hurry up. This is Colonel Wilder, the man I, I, I told you so much about. Oh, yeah. 
Hey, well, it's Hello. nice to meet you, Colonel. <laughs> oh, it hasn't been Colonel for some time. Oh, I know oh. that, but you'll always be Colonel to me. <laughs> yeah, quite a place you have here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we like yeah, it. Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> well, uh, uh, hey, uh, come on, I'll get you something to eat here. Hamburger, oh, hot dog, no, 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 thank you. Sit down. Thank you. I only... Sit down right here. Uh, well, what, no, are you, I... what are you, just passing through? I only came to tell you that uh, war seemed inevitable. Everybody's going back within 48 hours. Oh, hell, there ain't going to be no war. Well, they've been prophesying doom for the past 50 years. <laughs> ain't happened yet. No, we're not going to leave here. We're staying right here. This place is going to make us rich. 10,000 rockets with 100,000 workers coming right here. They won't come, Sam. They won't even get the chance. Oh, they'll come. They'll come. Man, we'll be ready for them when they do. Well, two main highways intersecting right here. The minerals out there, gold and, and uranium and, and diamonds. Why, there'll be trucks rolling by here 24 hours a day. I hope you're right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm right. You can bet on it. Well, I, I, uh, I have to be going. Yeah, well, well, well th 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 thanks for thinking of us. You know, you stay here at your own risk, but, uh, if you change your mind, be in town in the morning. Oh, we, will, we won't change our mind. They'll be coming, you hear? They're coming. Well, it won't be for long. Probably won't even be able to sleep at night. <laughs> what is hmm supposed to mean? It means that I don't trust those people on Earth. Well. I'll believe it when I see the rockets coming. Well, they'll be coming. 100,000 hungry miles. If there's no atomic war. Well, honey, there ain't gonna be no war. We're going to be rich. Well, am I right? Am I? My God. Mr. Parker, I've come to speak to you. I've come for an important reason. This is for you. Hit the door! Well, how was I supposed to know that? I mean, what, what if it had been a, a weapon? Where did we get the shovel? Where did we get the shovel? Come on. I can't. 
Oh, honey bear, I'm so sorry about what happened. No, I really am. But, but, but when he pulled that, that, that thing on me, I thought it was a weapon. Yeah. Oh, I did. No, I know. Yeah. Besides, there weren't supposed to be any, any Martians left. That's what the colonel told me. Oh, he wanted to meet one so badly. Who finally gets to meet one? Me. Well, what do I do? I shoot him. <laughs> Her? It. Who knows what it was? There wasn't even any body. Yeah. What kind of people are they anyway? I thought they were all wiped out with a plague. They've been hiding all these years. Well, it served him right, so jumping up on me like Sam? that, surprising me. Sam? What? Look. My heavenly day. Well, there ain't no more sand ships left. I bought the last one at an auction. Oh, damn, I never finished fixing it. Now what? Uh, the sand ship. What? Come on, come on. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not riding in that thing. Come on. No, I'm I am not letting you drive me in that thing. I can do it, Elma. I can no, do it. No, no. Elma, what are you going to do? Just stand here and let him kill us? Well, maybe, maybe they won't kill us. Elma, I just killed one of them. Now, what do you think they're going to do? <gasps> Elma, they killed our first two expeditions. Oh, come on, woman. <laughs>
Earthman. It was all a mistake. You see, I thought your friend had a weapon and it was going Pick to kill me. Weapon. That's why I fired on it. What? Pick up your weapon. Put it away. Let's see. Take this. What is it? Take it. You hold a grant to all of the territories from the Silver Mountains to the Blue Hills, from the Dead Salt Sea to the distant valleys of Moonstone and Emerald. Well, that maybe, maybe that, that may be half a mile. It is yours. Do you see what he gave me? I see. I see. Thank you very much, sir. I, I appreciate it. I don't know what to say. We leave you now. Prepare. Tonight is the night. This land is yours. said tonight. That must be it. Well, sure. The rockets are coming. The rockets. 10,000 rockets there bringing up workers in black. Earth. Well, here, you hold the deed and let me look. Earth. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there you are, you beautiful Earth. Hello there, Earth. Hello, you great, big, green, wonderful Earth. Send me your teeming masses, your hungry, starving millions. Sam Park Hill will be ready and waiting for you. Hamburgers, frying, hot dogs, broiling, chili cooking, onions peeled and sliced, buns warming, and coffee working. Come on, you beautiful earth! Turn on the lights, switch on the music, open the door. Get those hot dogs broiling. It's the perfect spot for a cafe. Two main highways intersecting. Out there, mineral deposits. Trucks going by 24 hours a day. All those hungry men. Oh, my. Sam, 
And Sam, I want to let you know a little secret. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be an off season. <laughs> <laughs> a million years in the future, a million light years away, some civilization will perceive a brief flicker in the heavens. Will they know us? That what we had was worth preserving? No. A falling star, perhaps, and their telescopes will continue to gaze into the universe. But we will be gone. Earth is dead, but are there people still alive? Caverns miles deep could shelter life from the terrible blast. This is Wilder's hope as he races to his brother's rescue. But what will survival mean now, on Earth or on Mars? Command on internal? Affirmative. Telemetry in launch condition? Affirmative. Missile in internal DC? Affirmative. Pressurization complete? Affirmative. T minus 60 seconds and counting. Range safety test select the switch to arm. Uh, Status check. Range safety arm light on? Right. Affirmative. Range ready? Ready. Water system ready? Affirmative. I have a trip complete light. Locks tanking secured? Locks tanking secured. T minus 20.
And just as there is stillness in what was once this nerve center on Earth, So there is a small and silent town on the far side of Mars. Lonely lights burn in the stores all day, and shop doors are unlocked as if people have run off without using their keys. Debris and memories decay in the still streets. The town is dead. except for Ben Driscoll. God. Activated the circuit. And you rang all by yourself, didn't you? Huh? Say she. Ah. Women, settle down. Settle down. It was over here.
directory. All right. Let's start with the A's. Amelia Arnold. Gladys, this is Benjamin. I am not at home right now. If you would care to leave a message, wait for the tone before speaking. I would be glad to leave a message, Gladys. Go to hell! If I was a woman, and I was the only one left on Mars, where would I be? Your name, what's your name? Genevieve Seltzer, what's your name? Driscoll, Benjamin Driscoll. Driscoll and Genevieve are not the only people left on Mars with a sudden exodus. A few isolated colonists remain, scattered over the planet, waiting and watching, hoping and praying, wondering what is left of Earth and what is to become of them in the now deserted Martian colonies. Would there be a final rescue effort? Tonight, Peter Hathaway searches the Martian sky, hoping and praying and wondering.
Marguerite, come out! Come out! Come out quickly! They've come! They're here! Look! We're saved! We're saved! saved. Now, you remember the drill? Marguerite? I know, Father. I'll check the circuit. Good. And then? The deck chairs. The deck, the deck chairs? What a... It's all right, Peter. I'll show her what to do if necessary. You shouldn't expect so much of her. Well, I'm going to try it radio contact. You inspect the big board. Circuits? Mayday. Mayday. This is 6295. Uh, Mayday. 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 This is 6295. They don't seem to be answering. I didn't ask you. Now, you and Marguerite have checked everything. Checked and rechecked. Thank God. This is our last chance. Our last chance. Everything ready? Everything's ready. Good. I'm sorry, my nails are wet. Oh. Oh. oh, you wouldn't happen to be free, would you, tonight? You wouldn't be trying to pick me up now, would you? Oh, no. No. Just a date. I promise. That's all. Just a date. Well. I'll just have to think about that now, won't I?
table over there. Of course, of course. trying to give myself a permanent, and then trying to style it. Oh. Oh. You know, it's, uh, it's funny how you always think how nice it would be to be alone. I, I said, it's funny how you always think how nice it would be to be alone. Ooh, it's sour. I'm sorry, I made it wrong. I like it sweet. And what about some food? Sweet. Of course. Sweet. Of course. Sweet. sweet.
But don't you like it? Well, I just can't eat that much. I have to watch my figure. You've got a, you've got a perfect figure. Oh, no. If I don't go to the club at least twice a day and work out and use a steam room and the pool, I just grow pounds on it. It's, it's terrible. I just wish there was still a masseuse at the club. I could really use a good massage to stimulate my blood cells. I could stimulate your blood cells. Oh, no, you have to have experience. Massaging is an art. Dear, this dress is this dress is cut all wrong. I know it. That's the trouble with living on Mars. The latest fashions just don't get here soon enough. Cocktail or how about some champagne? Oh, no, no, no. One is my limit. There's terrible calories in a cocktail. Yeah. Oh. Why didn't you leave Mars? What? So why didn't you leave Mars? Oh. They, they wouldn't let me take all my clothes. I didn't leave because I was in the mountains. I didn't know everybody was going. <laughs> Hi. Nothing. Um, don't you ever get lonely? Yes. That's why I was so glad to hear from you. You were? Oh, yes. It's hard being alone. Oh, I know. I mean, you have to make all your own meals, for one thing. And this is the first decent food I've had in months. Then, too, if something breaks down in the beauty shop or at home, I can't fix it. I have so many things for you to fix, you just won't believe it. You have? Oh, yes. <clears throat> it's getting late. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Look, I mean, I didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, I flew 1,500 miles just to see you. That far? Man. I'd like to go to bed now. All right. I do love having all the stores to go to, not paying for anything. I have every makeup known to woman in my house. I moved to a better house, of course. Of course. I think I've played out every shop in town, too. My closet just won't hold another outfit. I must have a hundred pairs of shoes. What about the bed? And jewelry. Earrings, brooches, rings, and necklaces. I just love fine stones. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds. <laughs> I have such a collection. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> well, good night. Thank you for dinner. Why don't you stay in one of those houses across the street? Why don't I... Come over tomorrow about noon and we can have some brunch. I'm so glad you can cook. And then I'll show you all the things I have that need repairing. Oh, it's going to be so good to have men around. I wonder if you can fix the sauna at the club. If you can do that. Oh, how I need it. So do I. Wait a minute, Buster. Just because we're the last two people on Mars doesn't give you the right to come on with me. I'll forgive you. Just this one time. Now, don't 
Don't forget, noon. Why don't you go down to the hardware store before you go to bed tonight and pick up some tools? Now, I have a few, but they're not good enough for all the work I have that needs to be done. And try to pick up something good for breakfast. Maybe you can make some waffles. I could only eat a half of one, but I do love them in coffee. Oh, I could use a new coffee maker. I just love black coffee in the morning. Well, good night. Driscoll, thoroughly disenchanted, flies away into the Martian wilderness, vowing never to return. He flies all night. He flies for a week and a day. He flies until he's put 10,000 miles between himself and Genevieve Seltzer and has swept her from his mind. Still, he can find no peace. I suppose there's not much left on Earth anyway. Don't worry, Peter. Haven't you got everything you'd ever want right here? Oh, yes, of course. I do, I do. Still, if only they'd seen us last week. Still... We mustn't give up hope. We must never give up hope. That's true. I have gin. <laughs> I'm going to take a little walk. Be back in a few minutes. Pick up some more firewood. They've come back. They've come back to take us all home. They'll be here by the morning. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Never give up hope.
Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> <laughs> Wine! We'll have a delicious meal ready for them when they land. <laughs> you know, I've kept all this for just this occasion. I knew they'd come someday. <laughs> meanwhile... Meanwhile, let us celebrate. <laughs> you remember the day the war began? How could we forget? Oh, all the rockets were called home and we were up in the mountains. We were the only ones left. Oh, Lord, how the years go by. You know, I couldn't have stood it without you. Both of you. I think I would have killed myself without you. But with you, it was worth waiting. I know it's been hard sometimes. Peter, please. You know we wouldn't have wanted to have it otherwise. I feel the same way. Uh -huh. Well, then. Here's to us. All three of us. And to our long wait together. Yes, I thought you'd left for Earth. Uh, Peter, this is Father Stone. Oh, hello, hello. Father. Oh, it's so good to see You're you. You're looking fine. Oh, I'm getting a little old. Well, I'm getting younger myself. And a lot older since I've been back to Earth. Oh, now, look, uh, what are our chances of getting back there? Oh, but we've been waiting years to go home. You know, we, we missed the ships and, and my family. I'm sorry, Peter. We'll be here for quite a while, I'm afraid. Uh, you're welcome to stay with us. Oh, that is... <laughs> all of us. Yes, how's, how's your wife? Oh, she's fine. And you had a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. daughter. Uh, yes, yes, I remember. <laughs> they're fine? Yeah, they're waiting for us down at the hut there. We've got a great meal waiting oh, for you. Come along. Lovely. Thank Come. you. Oh, General, do you, do you remember Spender? I'll never forget him. Well, about once a year, I walked past his grave, and, well, I suppose he finally got what he wanted, because, you know, he never wanted us to come up here. And I suppose he's happy now that almost all of us have left. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just the excitement, you know, my dear. Are you all right? Oh, yes, yes, yes I'll be all right. It's just, uh, you know, the waiting, the excitement. It's, mm, it, it's, it's as if I'd stayed alive all these years just for this day. Dear, it's so good to see you again, to hear your voices. <laughs> I feel better now. <laughs> Come on. Alice! Come see who's here! 
<laughs> Alice, you remember Colonel Wilder? Of course, Colonel Wilder. Mrs. Hathaway, yes, I remember. And this is Father Stone? Father Stone? How do you do? Uh, Colonel Wilder, my daughter, Marguerite. With pleasure. How old are you, Marguerite? Fourteen. I see. Now, come along. Make yourselves at home, Colonel, Father. Right over here. Please, please sit down. You, you have no idea what a delight I've been... Oh, I beg your pardon, of course. I forgot. Drinks, excuse me. Father. This can't be right. What can't be right? Well, I knew Hathaway years ago. I was at their wedding. Their daughter has to be 20, 22 years old. And Alice, she hasn't changed at all. Not one wrinkle. Do you suppose... Here, what are you talking about so seriously? We're all together, the trip is over, and it's like home. <laughs> Thank you. You're right, Mrs. Hathaway. And may I say, you're looking as pretty as ever. Mars must agree with you. <laughs> now, isn't that just like a man? Keep the conversation going. I'll be right back. Oh, where are you going? Uh, just out to check our bearings and make my report. Oh, well, now, wine. Our studies were fascinating. It's so fascinating, indeed, that we missed our ride back to Earth. Oh. Alice, do you remember that fossil we unearthed? I remember. So do I. Come along now, Father. Now, this, this, this fossil must have been, oh, at least 100,000 years old. And, oh, Colonel, come, come and sit down, please. 100,000 years old, and yet it was so perfectly preserved. Well, I'll show you. and Marguerite had... Dead from the Nuno virus, July 2000 AD. That's seven years ago. Yes. And who are they? Who else would they be? There now. No, oh, Father, I know. Why don't you take it? Oh, I could No, no, please, please, please. Oh, no, for, 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 for the church. Huh? <laughs> and now? A toast, huh? Yes. Come on. Now. My dears. <laughs> A toast. To all of you. <laughs> it's good to be among friends again. And especially to my dear wife and daughter, without whom I could never have survived. It's only because of your loving companionship that I have been able to be here for your arrival. What? <coughs> 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 
Do you know what just happened? Something about my husband? Yes. He's dead. His heart. I see. How do you feel? He didn't want us to feel badly. He told us this would happen one day, and he didn't want us to cry. He didn't teach us how. You know. He didn't want us to know. He said it was the worst thing that could happen to a man. To know how to be lonely, and know how to be sad, and then to cry. So we're not to know what crying is. Or sadness. He was so proud of us. At times, he almost forgot that he had made us. He took us and loved us as his real wife and child. And in a way, we are. years we sat and talked. <laughs> He's so much love to talk. He liked this hut and the open fire. We could have lived in a regular house in the town, but he preferred it here, where he could be primitive when he liked. He told me all about his lab and the things he did there. He wired the entire dead town below with speakers. When he pressed a button, the town lit up and made noises as if 10,000 people lived there. <laughs> Every Sunday evening, we'd sit in the deck chairs and watch his light show. He programmed Marguerite to enjoy it the most. And he would sit and light a cigar and talk to us. And every once in a while, the phone would ring. And a recorded voice would ask Mr. Hathaway scientific and surgical questions. And he would answer them. With the phone ringing and us here and the sounds of the town and his cigar. He was quite happy. There was only one thing he couldn't make us do. Grow old. He grew older and weaker every day. But we stayed the same. I guess he didn't mind. I guess he wanted us this way. We'll bury him with his family. I think he would have liked it that way. Take them 
with us. No. You can't just leave them here. I really think we should. Alone? How would they survive? I really don't think that is our concern. That was the decision of their creator. What do you mean? Well, they have a right to live. Just as much as you and I. But uh, their own life. The life that they were created to live. Their um, souls belong to Hathaway. I don't think they'd understand anything else. They'll eventually die without our help. I'll say goodbye. Mother, huh? when will my father come back? I don't know, darling. Perhaps never. Well, what will we do? We'll continue waiting. For what? I don't know. He never told me. Good morning, ladies. I'm Ben Driscoll. Uh, I, I don't mean to impose. It's just that it's been a long time since I've seen another human being. Make yourself at home, Mr. Driscoll. Well, thank you. <gasps> don't put yourself out there. I mean, I don't need a, a lot of entertaining or, or even much conversation. I just want a place to stay and a nice family feeling. Then you have come to the right place, Mr. Driscoll. Precisely. Sam, how's Alma? Well, she's not, she's not well. She took for bed the night that the war started, and she hasn't been up since. Mm -hmm. What, whatever happened to your, was it your brother's family down the States? They're dead. Oh, yeah. 
What about the rest of them? It's over, Sam. Earth's done with. Mars is all we have now. <laughs> Tell me, what's half of nothing? What? That's what I got. Half of nothing. That's what they give me. Half of nothing. What is that? That's a land grant from the Martians. You saw Martians? Oh, yeah. When? Well, let's see. Well, it was uh, the day you left. They showed up here in their sand ships, and uh, they just gave me that. Did they speak to you? Oh, yeah. What did they say? Well, they didn't say much. They just uh, handed me that scroll there and said, this land is yours. This land is yours. Yeah, much good that it does me. Then there are Martians still alive. We will get a chance to talk to them. No. No, I don't think so. Why do you say that? Well, they're weird. But they didn't look real to me. So when I fired on... What? What did you say? Well, I thought they was going to attack me. So I, I fired on, well, on just on one of them. All this time, all I wanted was to come in contact with a living Martian, speak with him, learn from him. <laughs> Why did they come to you? I don't know. Unless it was to warn me about the war. And did they? Well, no, no not exactly. They just, uh, they just said, uh, tonight is the night. But it was that night that the war began. Yes. Yes, they must be the Martians, only they would know. Look, this is real, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's real. It's worthless, but it's real. The Martians had to be real. And this isn't worthless. Yeah? They knew what was going to happen on Earth. Maybe they're allowing us to start over here. Yeah, but they killed our first two expeditions, remember? Yeah, we destroyed them with chicken pox. Maybe they decided there's enough here for what remains of both worlds. I mean, what's the point of destroying two civilizations? No. You're beginning to talk like Spender. I understand, Spender. I want you to tell me everything you remember about the Martians. Every last detail. The answer is all here, Colonel.
Hello. Agla? What did you say? Avisigana Lagla? I don't understand you. Ah, that's better. You do speak English. I do now. That must be the way he spoke to Sam. Sam? Oh, yeah, he's, he's a friend. This is a wondrous moment. Is it? Yes. God, you're a ghost. What? Gods, you're a ghost. Me? You? No. Where are you from? Earth. What's that? It's a planet. Up there. Planet of ghosts. I'm not a ghost. I'm alive. You're the one who's dead. Your people were destroyed by a plague. You must be mad. Don't you see this city? I see the ruins of the city. Dead over a thousand years. A thousand years? I live here. Your city's dead. It's alive. Can't you see the carnival lights, the boats, the women? Can't you see them? No. You don't see the city and the ocean beyond? There hasn't been an ocean there for over 40 centuries. This can mean only one thing. It has to do with time. You're a figment of the past. You are from the past. What year is it? 2007. That means nothing to me. To me, it is the year 4462853, SEC. And you are long dead. Uh, uh, but I can feel my heart beat. Feel. No, never mind. I can feel my own flesh. And so do I. And I was hoping, finally... Finally what? That I could speak to a Martian. Ask him oh, questions. Well, here I am. Speak to me. Ask. I'll tell you anything you want to know about my world. Your world is dead. It's your world that is dead. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right. How can you prove you're from the future? How do you know these ruins that you see are not the ruins of your own civilization 100 centuries from now? You cannot know. You're right. I cannot. What does it matter, anyway? Of what importance is it who is past and who is future? What follows will follow, now or in 10,000 years. All that matters is, you see your world and I see mine. Is that not enough, no matter what we each believe? Of course. You look despondent. I guess I am. Why? Because I hoped. For what? For this meeting. Such a long time. To learn. To learn? Yes, about your people, your beliefs. The secret of your life on Mars. Tear. Tear. This is the planet Tear. Oh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, Tear. Secret. There is no secret. Anyone with eyes can see the way to live. How? By watching life, observing nature and cooperating with it. Making common cause with the process of existence. How? By living life for itself, don't you see? Deriving pleasure from the gift of pure being. The gift of pure being. Life is its own answer. 
Accept it and enjoy it day by day. Live as well as possible. Expect no more. Destroy nothing. Humble nothing. Look for fault in nothing. Leave unsullied and untouched all that is beautiful. Hold that which lives in all reverence. For life is given by the sovereign of our universe. Given to be savored, to be luxuriated in, to be respected. But that's no secret. You're intelligent. You know as well as I what has to be done. Now I must go. My people are waiting for me. I have people waiting too. Good. Perhaps we'll meet again, some other night. And I would like to see that carnival of yours. And I would like to see the things you see. Good night, my friend. Wilder leaves the Martian and leaves his dream as well. His dream of sharing this new world with a few survivors of the race which had existed here for eons. The night is dark, the moons have descended. Starlight twinkles on the empty landscape where there is no sound but the roar of his own engine shattering the darkness. No living thing, nothing. Why don't you watch one of your movies on the war monitor, hmm? One of your old westerns. No. I've played them all a million times. Yeah. I know. Come on, cheer up. I'll think of something. What's 
John. John, something's wrong. What is it? Please tell me. Last night, I was wondering if we would be able to carry on here. There are so few of us left, and each of us not wanting to leave his little piece of Mars. Park Hill waiting for customers that will never come, Father Stone saying mass every day to nobody but himself. I was wondering if... We had made a mistake. Now I know we didn't. Not if you can enjoy life and take pleasure from the gift of pure being. That's a lovely thought. I want you to pack everything of value, everything you think we might need. Tell the children to do the same. Load it in the boat. I'll be back in a little while. Why? We're leaving this place. Where are we going? Where it all started. Still bored? Your daddy's got a surprise for you. A surprise? What is it, Mom? How would you like to go camping? Just the four of us, like we used to. You mean it? When? As soon as you get off your backside and start packing. <gasps> Come on! Here we go. All right? All right. Let's go. You know what you're going to see today? What? Martians. Where, when? You'll see. What do they look like, Dad? You'll know when you see them. How 
far are we going, Dad? Four million years. If things get any worse, I may put in for a transfer myself. What are you thinking about, Dad? Memories. Of what? The things that took us to this moment. John. race creates itself for a million years. Then it dies. Part in its own time with dignity. But what about the other part? Oh, why don't we stop him, Dad? Pick a spot. What do you mean? Tell me where you want to stop. Right here. You're just saying that because you're tired of riding in the boat. That's right. Well, I'm in a place with Martians in it. You'll have that. Are they here? Yes. Where? You'll see. Let's stop here, then. Marie, Robert, is this place all right with you? No. Aren't you and Mama going to vote? We'll let you kids decide. This is fine, Dad. Marie? Okay. All right. This is it, then. Okay. Here we go. That's it. Robert? Come on, honey. of them watching us make fools of ourselves? Who? The Martians. Will you do whatever you can to keep them from tearing this planet apart? Are there Martians here? You'll see them soon. You know, you kids made a good choice. This is going to be our new home, huh? What do you mean? Aren't we all going back? No, we're going to stay right here. What? We're going to learn the Martian way of life. We're going to learn their language and learn how they live so well. Dad! John, I think it may be a bit too soon. All right. We won't move here right away. We'll go back to our old house until we've all decided that we want to move here forever. But this is going to be our new home. And our new school. School? <laughs> Come on, let's set up camp.
I'm saying it may have been a Martian. There's one in First Town right now. David! My living here! No! No! Life is its own answer. Accept it and enjoy it day by day. Why are you burning those papers, Dad? Hmm? Oh, why? I'm burning what's behind us. Burning a way of life. The same way of life burned on Earth. You know, life there never did really amount to much. People got greedier and greedier. Wars got bigger and bigger until finally. Tell me what happened. <coughs> yeah. So we're going to strike out in a whole new direction. Find a new way of life. Here on Mars. Learn to live. That's what has to be done. I'll show you those Martians now. Wow. the duck? No. Where then? There. Those are the Martians. <laughs> <laughs> 